morning. Now, we have come a very long way since late uh, 2019. We all know that was the beginning of the so-called COVID. And since then, we have been talking a lot about it. You might recall that since the late 2019, December or January 2020, suddenly the world was confronted with this deadly virus. Before it was officially known as COVID-19, you, you might remember it was uh, known as Wuhan, Wuhan virus. Even our China, Channel News Asia referred it to as Wuhan virus, suggesting that it started from Wuhan. Uh, one of the things that countries and experts did the very first moment this uh, virus came about was to determine the source. Where did it come from? Uh, where did it all begin? Did it really come from the bats in Wuhan? How was the transmission like? Now, why is it so important to trace the origin? Several reasons were given. Uh, they want to establish accountability. Now, who is accountable for this? All this spread. Uh, what is the real cost? We must find the. We must have accurate findings. And then, uh, what about acceptable response? Uh, what must be done to eradicate or to contain the spread? Uh, what are the appropriate steps to manage the situation? These are correct questions to ask. And we must thank God that our government has done relatively a very good job managing the crisis. Otherwise, you won't be here uh, so freely. You have option of putting on masks or not. Uh, you can go out freely. Uh, unlike some countries, uh, we must pray for them. Uh, the, the China is experiencing quite a surge. Uh, the crisis is getting bad. Now, it was not solely the lockdown or the border controls, but the calibrated reopening of economy and travelling. We must thank God for that. In a sense, today we are studying a new book. Uh, we are trying to do the same this year for 2023. And I, I will embark on a series of, of sermon from X. Our focus will be on the spread of the gospel. After the ascension of Christ, the birth of the early church, and then under the Apostle Peter and also the Apostle Paul. Do a bit of comparison. COVID-19 is a transmission of harmful viruses, virus, and now with the side variances. The spread and the transmission of the gospel is the very exact opposite. Uh, while COVID threatens life, the gospel saves and transforms life. Uh, while we are supposed to contain COVID, we're supposed to spread the gospel. And we ask question, similar question, who is responsible for the spread of the gospel? Now, although commonly known as Acts of the Apostle, uh, basically it's the works of the Holy Spirit. So some has uh, referred to this book as the Acts of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Holy Spirit worked a great deal then in, the, in this book. We will have to find answer, what is the true cause? Of the, for the spread of the gospel. Then the establishment of churches, we'll read much in Acts. Now, no doubt it was the result of the disciples going out, the believers going out uh, in obedience to the Great Commission. In Acts 1.8, we see how they were called to be witnesses of the Lord. What must be done to the gospel? This is the only big difference of the Wuhan or the COVID-19 Instead of eradication and containment, we are given a mandate to spread. X18 is the mandate. We are to spread the word to the ends of the world. And this is the ultimate call. This is the reason why uh, X was written. It's so that believers know that they are to be witnesses of the gospel. You will be my witnesses. X18. That is the Lord's command. We are witnesses to the gospel that we receive. A most appropriate response, we talk about the great sacrifice of Christ for the world and for ourselves. So I want to just briefly look at the books of Acts before we go to the passage for today. Uh, right, the book of Acts. Uh, <coughs> very quickly, you see uh, 
the, the work of Christ on earth, following by the, his return to heaven, is actually the ascension of Christ, Acts chapter 1, and followed later on the church age. The gospel age, Acts, Acts, uh, the period of Acts, about 30 years, and that's where we say the church began. And of course, uh, you see later on as we study how uh, it all started with the Jerusalem Crusade. First by Peter, John, Stephen, Philip is mentioned, are mentioned, and the, more than half the book of Acts is start, uh, focused on Paul, for the ten maker. Paul making his missionary trip or the crusade to the end of the world. And of course, there's a breakdown of the books of Acts, the foundation of the church, and the churches to come under Peter, Philip, and Paul. Uh, if you go by the map, it started off right at the big bottom uh, where Jerusalem is and up to Antioch, and it spread all the way to the west, all the way to Rome. That's how the gospel went from Jerusalem and all the way Paul brought it right through in the end to Rome where he also gave his life. It's very simply, X talks about um, many things. I just work out this. If you're interested, you can find out what X is all about. Actual account, author, ascension, X of the apostle, <coughs> and who are accepted Gentiles. Talk about Christ, talk about church, Christian obedience, Christian witness, and transformation. A lot of mention about transformation, uh, upheaval, travel, travel plans, missionary trips. And then salvation, salvation for souls, salvation for the saints are sancti sanctified, uh, edified, the spread of the gospel, the story of redemption, sacrifice. These are all about X. And uh, X 1 8 is a key verse. We talk about witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Now these are in the sequence, huh? 1 to 7, 8 to 12, and 13 to 28. Just a brief, uh, three audiences, the Jews, the Samaritans, the Gentiles. And of course we fall under the Gentiles group. Uh, the pillars of the church, you will find in the book of uh, Acts, Mention of Peter, John, Philip, Peter, Saul, Paul, and Barnabas, Mark, and Luke included. And the timeline, we are talking about somewhere 30 to 35 for the first five years. Later on, the spread to 48 to 62. Right? A total of 32 years. <coughs> Just for the brief outline, very fast. Uh, <coughs> What is it that we must be witnesses of? That's my, our key focus this morning. Whose witnesses are we? Where are we to begin? And, what, and to what end should we be prepared to go? Is it a timeline that we can keep? This will be our first lesson for today, or, or for this first sermon. The key emphasis is we are called to be witnesses. Uh, let me share an experience which I want to entitle my own experience, We Had Witnesses. I want this is my own experience. Back in 2016, uh, we made a very short trip to JB, basically to to service our car, <laughs> get it repaired, service it. We had our, we just had our car service at the workshop. As I drove out, and uh, we we come to make a left turn, we have, of course have the right of way lah. But the the car that is on the outermost just simply shoved right into and cut into our path. The driver of the vehicle was an old lady. Uh, we were hit on the front driver uh, because the driver just saw from the second lane outside and cut in. Uh, it was pretty clear who was at fault. And how can I be sure? What do you think I was so sure? We had witnesses. <laughs> we had witnesses, all right? We had the Indian security guard standing there who happened to be standing there at the, looking at the corner. Then we had a shop owner that, of course, the shop owner is not, uh, not seen in the picture. Now, here's the uh, security guard and, of course, the frustrated car owner, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the two witnesses who stood up, 
uh, the shop owner and the security guard, we were much help. Uh, of course, we took almost two hours of haggling over with, with this lady. Uh, very frustrated, reasoning and talk with her. Even, and then she brought in her car workshop uh, nephew. Try to interfere and say that you, you must be your fault. Uh, you didn't signal uh, all, this, all this nonsense. Uh, we had no choice. We, had, we simply took the meagre compensation, 300 uh, ringgits, not 300 sing, uh, 300 ringgits, uh, instead of having to make a police report. Forget, don't forget we are in foreign land. Uh, it doesn't favor us to go to police, to make a police report. Thank God for seeing us through. Thank God that uh, that ordeal <laughs> with the unreasonable owner, who for the most part of the two hours, stubbornly refused to admit her fault, even though we had witnesses speaking in our favour. Now the fact from this experience is that we need witnesses. We need witnesses and we had witnesses. Uh, they were ready to tell the truth. These witnesses were ready to tell the truth. They were willing to come forward. They were not fearful, right? There are many types of witnesses, but some witnesses just fail to meet this criteria. They may know the truth, they are not willing. Uh, it, sometimes they are willing, but then they are threatened. If you speak up, you get into trouble. You have more trouble. So, we thank God. But how does this apply to our time today? How you must see that we, in the cause for Christ, in the gospel sake, we need witnesses. And we need witnesses for the Lord today. And what are we to be witnesses of? What are we to be witnesses of? We have read in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, it says Jesus began to do and to teach. And then it seems good, uh, according to Luke, that having followed all this, Luke wrote the account of what, uh, of the life of Jesus, what he taught uh, the disciples. We are to be witnesses of what Jesus did. Then we are... Again, one and two tells you, I have dealt with all of them. Paul, uh, Luke is saying, emphasizing again on what Jesus has done until the day he was taken up. So the whole writing was from Christ's birth, death, uh, life, death, and ascension. And Acts 1.3 says, Christ presented himself alive to them. Also talk about his... Uh, his testimony, his proof of his resurrection. And how on 40 days after the resurrection, he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Liu records all the infallible truth, infallible proof of the resurrection of Christ, which practically gave the disciples hope and strength. Now, the disciples were a very discouraged lot because their, their Lord and Master was crucified. And, but because of the resurrection, they had renewed hope, they had strength. The emphasis now is to share this resurrected Christ. Uh, no doubt he went to Calvary, but don't forget he resurrected and ascended. And now he has given them a mission. And although Christ's mission on earth is done, now the work to bring the gospel began. The disciples and the believers must assume this responsibility. What are we believers to be witnesses of? Songs like this tells us that we are to tell them uh, everything about Jesus. All that he did, all the good works. More importantly, his death on the cross. And then he's, he's giving his life for mankind. What he has taught us to live a holy, sanctified life, to bring glory to God. Of course, our team for this year is to be a shining light, uh, to be a witness. The power that comes from overcoming sin and death and hell, the power that transforms our life, we are to tell the story and be a witness. God sent His Son. He called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. We have a story to tell. We have a story to tell today, and we... Don't you also sometimes need to recall that Jesus or our Lord has saved us, saved you? 
Otherwise, you won't be here. Or unless you have been brought by someone. Can you recall the time when you were troubled? Can you recall the time when you were depressed? Confused? Simply without peace? Fearful? Perhaps that day you were seeking for meaning to your existence, purpose in life. Perhaps you have wondered, is there really a God up there? Now since that day you have discovered faith. Since that day you have found meaning and purpose. Most important, you have found a friend in Jesus, one whom you can count on, you can depend on. I hope this experience will still be with you and you still can recount them. And, you, and now our job, our call, our command is to share this. Go. Share that witness. Tell the truth. Not be, be not fearful. Witness that he, what he has did for you, he has done for you, and what he's able to do. By our sharing, we hope others will see uh, what we have uh, experienced through our coming to the Lord Jesus. Whose witnesses are we? Acts 1 8 again says, we, You are to be my witnesses. Christ's witnesses, and you are to be his witnesses in all Jer Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end. And of course, to remember the command of our Lord Jesus early on, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. You see here, when this was given, they have a, another 10 days after the rest, uh, when the power, the, for the, before the Holy Spirit will come, that's our next uh, lesson, the the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Pentecostal experience. Now, they are to go and make disciples and the Holy Spirit will come and energize them so that they are able to be His witnesses. Where do we begin? The places are mentioned, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the chapters that will be covered eventually. Right? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and until the uttermost part of the earth, until the end of the world. So, when you see this uh, from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and until the end of the world, you will see how Paul has, in a way, fulfilled that. From, from Jerusalem, Israel, he went westward and all the way towards Rome. In those days, that was a vast, long travel, long distance covered in those days. Of course, today we go around the whole globe. <laughs> today we have a greater responsibility. We have, we have the convenience of travel, uh, technology. But those days, he has covered, he has shown us where we are to go, the ends of the world. And, <coughs> hold on. When is our witness completed? When we sing this song about finally crossing the river, fighting final world, uh, war, of course, the witness ends when we pass on. The day we pass on, we have completed our journey here. Our Hopefully, our witness is complete. We will see him face to face. We will be greeted by our Lord. Until that day, we are to be his witness. And we read in his the following verses, we also will complete when Christ comes. Obviously, when Christ comes, our witness is complete. And how would he be coming for us? Here he mentioned that he will come for us, nine, verse 9 and 10. He will come in the same manner as he was taken up in the cloud. He will come in the cloud and... This is the promise. Men of Galilee, why do you keep looking up? This same Jesus will come in the same way as he, has, he was brought up. Now we might take a few assurance from here that he will come in person. This is the reality of the second coming of Christ, <clears throat> the day when he will come. He will come in person. I won't go through the other verses that uh, talks about he will come in person. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Then he will come in a cloud. Uh, I think I need this change. 
Okay, he will come with the clouds. He will come uh, without warning. These are the verses. We won't go to that too much of it. Uh, First Thessalonians, Second Peter. But the truth about the second coming of Christ is that he will come in person with the cloud without warning. Now, uh, we. This is not an uncommon sight. This is not uncommon, a signboard placed at the junction of the road. I'm sure you must have at one time seen it or another, although I took it somewhere in 2013. <laughs> Old picture. But this doesn't change. The appeal for witnesses to come forward to help the police in their investigation. I know we often glance over this. Sometimes we don't even bother what, what is that. Uh, <clears throat> but suppose you are the one hit in the accident. Suppose it was your spouse, suppose it was your parent or your child lying in now in hospital because of that incident there. Suppose it was a hit and run. Would you not want to establish the truth? Would you not want to know what really happened? The witness or witnesses to such accident have a what? Have a moral obligation to come forward to tell the truth, to tell the truth of what they have seen. That's the application. The witnesses, of course, not everybody responds to the appeal, but there are people who respond to this. They will call, they say what they have seen. That's how the police solve uh, the case and settle the incidents. This morning, you may say that that's a road accident. What has that got to do with me? Well, I cite this because accident happen, can happen to any one of us. You are not excused from accident, neither am I. Now, our, our loved ones are also exposed to it. In accidents, truth of what really happened must be established for, for the purpose of deterrence, for, for punitive action. Accidents must be, uh, uh, the truth of accident must be established and then witnesses are crucial. To, to establish the truth. More importantly, <coughs> just like road accident for, for the believers in the spiritual context, the, it is a spiritual destiny that we are talking about when we talk about witnessing the gospel. It's a spiritual destiny that is at stake. Eternity is at stake for those who do not come to the fall of Christ. Those people need someone to tell them of the gospel. Someone to bear a witness to them that Jesus indeed died and rose again for them. Now when I go through the Bible, uh, basically I come across three types of witnesses. Three types of witnesses. The first is false witnesses. The Bible warned of false witnesses. Uh, none, hopefully none of us are such false witness. This is against the gospel of Christ. The Lord will deal with the, such false witnesses accordingly. God help us that we will not be a false witness. In a court today, giving false testimony in court earns you the crime of perjury. And it's a criminal offence. False witnesses, the Bible speaks about it. The Bible also speaks about flawed witnesses. People who are flawed, uh, something wrong with the witness that they, are, they have given. They may not be intentionally giving it, but it is flawed in the sense of not being totally credible, not visibly credible. Now, the Bible says we are called to be living light, sought and witness for Christ. We must not be careless as our witness, as an ambassador for Christ. Because when you are careless, we become powerless. I remember the car accident that I mentioned. In the case of my car accident in JB, I only found out after the settlement, after everything. When I get home, that the car video camera was not recording. <laughs> uh, therefore, if I've depended on the car camera, which I almost threatened to 
do it at, at that very point. I was challenging the uh, my cam I, my camera must have recorded it and all these things, but it will take too long for me to show you. <laughs> but I didn't know that the camera was not recording. It was not plugged in. Uh, it was somehow the cable was not plugged in correctly. It was not recording. <clears throat> then there and there and then I was very confident it's working and almost threatened. If I've defended on the camera, it would have been a flawed and ineffective witness. Literally powerless. Are you a flawed witness? Uh, you are not plugged into the power of the Holy Spirit. You try to speak, but it's no, without power. You are not linked. You are not energized. You are not effective. You think you are a witness, but you are not a power, empowered one. You are flawed. The Bible also talks about faithful witnesses. The books of Acts records for us several examples. We will be reading about Peter, James, Stephen, Philip, Barnabas, and of course Paul. There are plenty of proof that Paul was indeed one of the greatest. From the persecutor of the saint to the preacher of the word to the prisoner of the Lord. That is the Paul's transition in life. Do you know that the word martyr, martyr is also used to be an analogy for a witness? To be a Christian martyr is to be a Christian witness. A faithful witness must be prepared to be a martyr for whatever you testify and believe. You are willing to die for it. You speak the truth, you are willing to die for it. For this case, we see that the, holy, the apostles and the early disciples literally were martyred for the faith and witness. The truth today is that not many of us have been privileged to be called a martyr. I don't think you and I will be maybe called to lay down our life for the cause. But we are definitely called to live for him, not to die for him, but to live for him, to be a witness for him. That being a witness goes beyond just uh, inviting friends. Of course, we, start, we can start with the simple step, inviting someone, but involve our life matching our words and belief so that others can be brought closer to the saving knowledge of Christ. Of course, you can invite someone. Given if you have merely in, tried to invite someone, you are doing it right, uh, the first step. But we must make sure it's right all the way. Now, I read this testimony of one who was invited to a church. <coughs> Quite relevant. <coughs> and the, uh, the person who responded, this is her letter to her friend regarding the visit. Now you listen to it. Her, her letter is entitled, I Won't Be Back. A high school girl wrote this letter to a friend. I attended a church yesterday. Although you invited me, you were not there. I looked for you, hoping to sit with you. I sat alone, a stranger. I wanted to sit near the back of the church, but the rows were all packed with regular attendant, attendants, attendees. An usher brought me right to the front, the best seat. But I felt as though I was on parade. I was brought right across many pews. I thought I, they were parading me. During the singing of the hymns, I was surprised to note that some of the church people wasn't singing. Between their sighs and their yawns, they just stare into space. Three of the kids that I have respected on campus were whispering to one another throughout the whole service. Another girl was giggling. I really didn't expect that in your church. The pastor's sermon was very interesting, although some of the members of the choir didn't seem to think so. They looked bored. They looked restless. One kept smiling to another, someone in the congregation. There were several people who left and then came back to the sermon in the midst. Of I thought, how rude. I could hear the constant rough shuffling and the doors and door, uh, and the feet, the doors opening, closing. The pastor spoke about the reality of faith. The message got to me. I, I made up my mind that I must speak to someone about the, the message after the service. But after chaos reigned after the benediction, I said good morning to one couple, but their response was less than cordial. I look for some teens whom I can share and discuss the sermon, but they were all huddled in one corner talking about the latest music group. 
My parents don't go to church. I came alone yesterday, hoping to find a place to truly worship and find some love. I'm sorry, but I didn't find it in your church. I won't be back. That friend was an absentee witness. Are you one? Now, uh, this simple story is definitely believable. Let me tell you my story. When I was 12, uh, towards the end of my primary six, I was attracted to church, junior fellowship, Sunday school because of the food. It's all right uh, when you're 12. <laughs> A friend of mine invited me, influenced me, said that I must go. There, there are games. At the end of it, you have food. I went. Uh, but when I went, he left. He left and was not to be found. But I stayed on. I, I think the food, attraction of the food is good. The, the games also fine. Thank God that somehow the simple gospel touched my heart and I believed that year. Personally, I am encouraged by the good works done by uh, your evangelism and pastoral staff. You see for yourself Christmas service. They have gone out to the old airport road estate. They have visited the residents. Uh, they have given up goodies. They brought gifts. And then now they are able to bring them in. The gospel was given. The works must carry on. The work of reaching out to this must carry on. Let's encourage them. Let's pray. Let's follow up uh, the works uh, of sharing the gospel to the neighborhood. This is one example of what a witness of Christ would do. If we have to go back to the simple definition of a Christian witness, it would be this. A witness tells the truth. right? A witness tells the truth. He sticks to the truth and he lives the truth. Right? Similarly, we are called to be a witness for Christ. We are to influence others for the truth because it matters. If it doesn't matter, then don't forget about it. But it matters. It matters to you, right? It has changed your life. It matters. Any failure or disregard is a falling short of the expectation of our lords. It brings dishonor. It turns people away. The call to witness is clear. The need to be a constant and good uh, witness is even more important. Now, we don't need to be involved in car accident to tell you that a good and true witness makes a critical difference. Uh, in a car accident, the witness is very important. The, today, of course, we have more gadget. Besides just the verbal, we have cameras. Uh, we have always, at the moment uh, you are hit, everybody pull out their phone now. They, before they talk, they snap, 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 snap all the pictures. And they keep, and they try to prove their case. And <clears throat> I hope we are not, we will not be rudely awakened someday by our unsafe loved one that we have turned them away because we are not a good witness. Don't forget X18, we have read that. This is not an option. X18 is not an option. We are to be a witnesses, whether we like it or not. Only don't be a false witness. Don't be a flawed witness. Be a faithful witness. Let me end. Uh, I found this written by an unknown author who entitled it A Letter from Hell. The author wrote about Lewis. Lewis fell asleep in her bed, dreamt that someone in hell wrote her a letter. And the letter was delivered to a the letter was delivered to a messenger. The messenger crossed great length, lakes of burning fire, brimstones that occupy hell, just to deliver the letter to her. The letter was brought to her. Louis, in her dream, trembling away, took the letter and read the content. And she, it goes like this. My friend, I stand in judgment now and feel that you are to blame somehow. On earth, I walk with you day by day, but never did you point me the way. You knew the Lord in truth and glory, but never did you tell the story. My knowledge then was very dim. You could have left me 
safe to him. Though we live together on the earth, you never told me of the second birth. And now I stand this day condemned because you failed to mention him. You taught me many things. That's true. I call you friends and I trusted you. But I know now, I learn now that it's too late. You could have kept me from this faith. We walk day by day and talk by night, and yet you showed me not the light. You let me live and love and die. You knew I would never live on high. Yes, I call you a friend in life and trusted you through joy and strife. And yet, on coming to this end, I cannot now call you my friend. Written by Marshall, the lady. Louis awoke from that sleep, from that dream. The dream was so real, and she was just sweating away. As she thought of that, she promised, she remembered and she promised herself that she would call Mar Marshall the next day to invite her to church. But the horrible truth was that she was told when she called, don't you know, Marshall was killed last night in a car accident. Is this your testimony? <laughs> uh, are we sometimes too late? We want to witness, but we are too late. Would there be a friend in, he in hell saying you did not do your part? Beloved, are you a good witness? That's the message today. Do not hesitate anymore with the giving and sharing of the gospel. Uh, don't wait till it's too late. Let's strive every Christian to be a witness. And we must be a good, loving, consistent, persistent, and faithful one. And let us do so with much urgency. Don't forget we are witnesses, like it or not. Hopefully, we are not a false, flawed, absentee one, but let's be a faithful witness. And let's always remember our team for the year. We are to be a shining light. It's the same. Shining light, sh shining example, faithful light, faithful witness. May God help us. Let us pray. Father, we just ask that you will enable us to not only... Uh, accept the gospel that has changed our life, but be willing to be a good witness of the great works you have done in our life. Help us, dear God, we pray in Jesus' name.